everyone welcome back to our channel Danae and Carlos here and today we have my friend from the East Coast Gennaro <laughs> Tis I hi <laughs> how art thou I I, I fare I fareth well fellow brother <laughs> of the East <laughs> <laughs> today we have Gennaro sharing his story as part of my story series here on our channel if you guys haven't watched previous videos once you're done watching hit this video with Gennaro Please feel free to go back and watch them, share, subscribe, and we hope that his story impacts one of you guys or many of you guys. And yeah, um, thank you guys. I know that uh, we've been trying to plan this for a while, and it finally just uh, everything lined up, and we were able to do it. Uh, the testimony that I wanted to share is a is a, is a recent one. Uh, my wife and I moved here from Colorado and we uh, after living there for seven years the Lord told us to come here and that was a difficult move because before that we lived in New Jersey born and raised in New Jersey that's where we're from the Lord moved us out of New Jersey to go to Colorado for seven years and then from Colorado to Texas and Dallas and I was kicking and screaming the whole time <laughs> I had a really bad attitude about it but um, we went into Colorado to serve a ministry and um, the ministry was also led by family and it didn't quite end the way we thought it would. It didn't even start the way we did. We wanted it to, or we thought it would. And so like many people, especially young people and nowadays, when you get the call of God, you're so super excited and you're ready to go and you're ready, I'm gonna take over the world. And when you get there, it's like, duh, you go lead, right? It's like <laughs> you flatline. And that's what happened to us. We went into a small church setting. I mean, it was a home church. It continues to be a home church to this day. We were six people strong. <laughs> and worship consisted of YouTube videos <laughs> and or CDs. And um, I remember sitting there going, I left my career as a teacher and a performer to come to Colorado and do this. And I was like, no, stop playing. Like, there's got to be more. But for seven years, I had to sit under this ministry and learn what I believed and why I believed it. And why was I so dependent on the worship with the instruments and the singers and, you know, the great worship that we enjoy here at CFNI. It's beautiful and it's great. But sometimes it manufactures a lot of what we consider to be spirituality when in relation, in reality, excuse me, um, spirituality is really a relationship with Jesus Christ through his Holy Spirit. And it, it was so difficult for me. I hated Colorado. I hated it so much because I went from major city to rural setting and I was like, these people don't even like me. I don't even like them. <laughs> but we stayed. We stayed because we knew we had a short word from the Lord. And if you haven't found a spirit-led uh, spouse <laughs> to keep your head right, I would greatly admonish you to do that if you are called to marriage. Not all of us are called to marriage. But if you're called to marriage, please know the Lord first so that then you can know each other. That's a word. So my wife dedicated herself to really helping me walk through this time. And a lot of things went through, but the one thing I'm going to focus on is the relationship with leadership. Leadership is very difficult, uh, not only for the leader, but for the led. And as the led, I chomped at the bit more times than I can actually have space here to explain. Um, nothing they did was good enough. Uh, everything that they tried to implement, I scoffed at, talked under my breath, and I had a bad attitude about, right? And so the first scripture that I want to read is in 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 5, uh, beginning at verse 1. I'm reading from the NIV, and it says, Do not rebuke an older man harshly, but exhort him as if he were your father. Treat younger men as brothers. Verse 2, older women as mothers 
and younger women as sisters with absolute purity. And that was something that I really had to navigate. Um, because coming from a fatherless situation, I didn't know how to relate to another man. I didn't know what all that entailed and what the discipline of that was and how to take criticism uh, from somebody in leadership when um, the Bible clearly extols us to do that, you know? And um, it was so difficult for me to even, I didn't even believe whenever I got a compliment. That's how bad it was. I would always go, did you really believe that? Did you really mean that when you said that? Because uh, I'm not taking it. So it was difficult for me to take anything merely because he was older and he was a leader over me. And the Lord started to really deal with my heart uh, about the, 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 the problem with authority that I had and to some extent still have. Um, I, I can say that I'm better, but I won't say that I've arrived. I don't think that in this life, this side of eternity, we ever actually get there. It's always um, uh, a progressive type of thing. And um, so fast forward seven years, we felt there was no relationship. We felt there was no connection. We felt all of this stuff. Mind you, not only are they our leadership in ministry, but they're also our family. So that, that dialed it up to like a thousand more. Um, we finally got to the point where we had a massive blowout. Uh, and I told my wife, I said, you know, we, it, it, we need to do something else because this is not working. We've been here for seven years. There's no growth in the ministry. There is no, um, nobody being saved that we know of. We aren't reaching the masses. And I said to her, we need to figure out what God wants us to do because um, I, I'm, I'm not staying here anymore, especially after that massive blowout. And the Lord said to me to come to CFNI. And I was like, eh, no, 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 no. But anyway, I, I submitted, I obeyed, and I'm here. This is my last semester. <laughs> so uh, we come here uh, last December, so 2020, December 2020. Uh, we got a call from a, a very dear friend of ours and her call, when, she, when it was her on the phone, I knew something was up. And her message to us was, it's time for reconciliation. And I was upset. I was upset because before we left Colorado, we tried to reconcile. We really did. I wrote letters. I tried to call on the phone because I, I, I understood reconciliation. But for whatever reason, it just didn't, it didn't, you know, it didn't happen. So three years later, here we are, and now I'm getting this call about reconciliation. And I'm like, but I did that. I tried to do that, and I, I was brutally rebuffed. So I prayed about it. And um, as God often does, <laughs> he spoke to me, and I said to him, this isn't fair because we didn't do anything wrong. We actually tried to reconcile it before we got here. And very gently, the Holy Spirit said to me, when I said to him, I, we didn't do anything wrong, the Holy Spirit said to me, neither did I. But it wasn't like this condemnation, like, I didn't either. It was more like him putting his arm around me going, I know how you feel, neither did I. And that broke me. That really broke me because I understood that unfair treatment is a part of every human being's existence and life experience. It's gonna be. And you're not always gonna be received well. You're not always going to be stored properly. You may not even be recognized for a season in your life. And it touches on all of those issues as to why you're called and uh, where you're going and what your destiny is. But at the end of it, Joshua teaches us that um, our highest calling is to serve. That's our highest calling. Whether it's in ministry or in marriage, you serve. You serve one another. And you don't do it for the title. You don't do it for the acumen. You don't do it for whatever. You do it simply to serve. And so when God said to me, I didn't either, his follow-up statement to that was, 
I need you to go and act like my son. And so I want to leave you with this verse. It's from Luke 20. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting older. Uh, that's Luke 20. Put on the elevator music. Yes, elevator music. Play! Oh, Luke 20, 24. Hallelujah! 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 There, there it is. So, <laughs> I'm going to start actually at verse uh, 21. So that's uh, Luke 20, starting at 21. It says, So the spies questioned him, Teacher, we know that you speak and teach what is right, and that you do not show partiality, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Verse 22. Is it right for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Verse 23. He saw through their duplicity and said to them, Show me a denarius, whose image and inscription are on it. Caesar's, they replied. Verse 25. He said to them, then give back to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. I often heard uh, an evangelist say that Jesus' follow-up question should have been, now whose image is on you? Right? Give unto Caesar what is Caesar's and give unto God what is God. If the coin belongs to Caesar, because that's whose image is on it, and his image is upon us, then we must render to God what is God, and that's obedience, and that's service. And so we, we aren't always going to have it our way. It, it, that's just life. And it's a different world than the one you were raised in. And so when you step onto the stage of a greater worldwide civilization, humanity, you start to see that not everybody believes the same thing. Not everybody goes about it the same way. But unity of faith does not mean uniformity of worship and we must must wrestle with all of these things because at the end of the day who are you serving are you serving yourself for what you get in return or are you serving these people who don't recognize you who possibly mistreat you who pro possibly will never promote you but you're doing it for the Lord and if you're doing it for him then it has eternal value No one can tell. Dine, you're too short. Hi, low. Sorry. Get I am your... Gus. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just as short. No, uh, no, that's you're fine. You're good. Okay. They're good like this. They don't know. They can't see our bottom. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Bloopers, they are staying in. Let me introduce you now. There's so much. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay. Let's all try to harmonize real quick. This is how we're ready. ready. What's my note? What's my note? Oh, no, no. <laughs> we're, we're gonna do. Oh. Yeah, nice. <laughs> that was awkward. Why'd you have to chicken out? Did anyone, why you I don't know to, how to harmonize. We do this all the time. Okay, let's just go. I don't know how much is on this. Okay. And.